Hi, this is Chris, the SAT expert at Magoosh. I've had over 15 years experience helping students ace the SAT. And today, I'm gonna to talk about the distance rate formula. Why do you have to know this? Well, there's a certain question type, a word problem, about moving vehicles, going in different directions. That freaks a lot of people out. But this formula can make things a lot easier. So here's a distance problem. We have Steven cycling at a constant rate of 10 miles per hour and Gertrude cycling at a constant rate of 15 miles per hour. So we know people are moving at a certain rate for a certain amount of time. That's how we know we're in the distance formula world. So we're gonna come back to this question in a second and we're gonna go straight to that distance formula. We have distance equals rate times time. Now we're gonna put this to work with us with that very problem we just saw, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to remember this. See how D stands for distance, rate stands for R, the beginning, and T, time. T, time starts with T, so there it is. And we're gonna make that and simplify that into D equals RT. That's gonna be your magic formula. You always wanna keep that in mind, but of course know what those things stand for. Okay, so let's take a look back here at Steven and Gertrude. And not only are we, or am I going to give you that question, I'm gonna give you some answer choices. You can try this on your own if you want, but let's do it together now. So Steven cycles at a constant rate of 10 miles an hour for two hours and then stops. So let's use our formula. We know the rate, that's the speed. So that's 10 miles an hour for Steven. Let's get that right there. And then he goes for how long? For two hours. So we know that if he is going at this rate, 10 times two, we have a distance of 20. And that's essentially how far Steven has gone. Now, if we look at Gertrude, we can do the same math, but she's going faster. And the question is, how long will it take her? So we actually have the distance she needs to go, which is 20, and her speed, which is 15. And now we suddenly don't know T, that's what the question is asking for. But we can plug this information back into that original equation, and that's why it's so handy. Essentially, we use it twice, once for Steven, we figured out how far he had gone, and then we plugged that 20 down into the equation here with Gertrude, and that gave us 20, and then that equals 15, being the rate t is the time. We solve for t, next step here, t is 20 over 15. And that is equal to four, over three. So, what is four over three? It's the same as one and one third. Let's make that four a little bit better there. One and one third, what's one third of an hour? 20 minutes, and therefore an hour and 20 minutes it is. Now, you don't even have to figure out that one third being 20 minutes. If you look at the answer choices, you have 45 minutes, which is less than an hour, and you look at your, the number we got, four thirds, that's greater than one, but less than two, and the only answer that would work is answer choice C. So, quick way of doing things as well. But the focus, of course, here is the distance rate formula. So let's do some more. This one's gonna be a little bit harder, scarier. It's the two trains, the dreaded scenario. They are setting off from different cities located 300 miles from each other. They're headed directly towards each other, but don't worry, on different tracks. The first train moves at a constant rate of 40 miles an hour, and the second moves at a constant rate of 60 miles an hour. So what's the key here? If objects are heading towards each other, we always combine their rate. And get if they're heading directly at each other, you combine their speeds. And so 40 plus 60, that's gonna be our rate, that's 100. And so we have the fact that they are D, 300 miles from each other, and that they are going at 100 miles an hour because we have to combine their rates, and we have to figure out the time. And we get 300 equals 100 T, and then before we can get T equals three. And so, Therefore, we can see that in three hours, they've gone how far? Well, in three hours, again, you're combining their speeds together. So this, this train over here goes 120 miles, which is 40 times three. This train over here goes 180 miles. So all in all, they've traveled 300 miles. Now, it would seem like the answer is C, one o'clock, but notice that we're not waiting for the two trains to get to the other cities. We're asking when they meet each other. And so they're gonna meet each other at this halfway point in time. So in three hours, they've covered the total 300 miles. 
but half of three hours, which is 1.5 hours, they've actually connected. That's the point they intersect. So it's actually half of three, which again is an hour and a half. If they started at 10, that means at 11.30, they are going to pass each other. And that's what makes it tricky. Now, this is one of, definitely a harder question, but the point is that we can still use distance as equal rate times time. We can still use that formula when we know that we're combining rates, things coming together. But now we're gonna look at a different problem, the last problem here, which is a tricky one. Here, we're gonna go back to Steven and Gertrude, but we're gonna put them in cars instead of bicycles. But here, one is chasing the other one. And so, unlike the trains where you're combining because they're heading towards each other, here they're in catch-up mode, or at least Gertrude is. So, Stephen, let's read the problem here, he leaves farm town driving at a rate of 40 miles an hour. So where is he one hour? Well, he's 40 hours from Gertrude, who starts driving at that point at 50 miles an hour. So when is she actually gonna reach Stephen? Well, assuming again that they're both continuing to drive, after one hour, he is 40 miles an hour, we know that, but she is what, 50 miles an hour, which is 10 miles an hour faster. Let me get that zero there. 10 miles an hour faster than Steven. So you can think of it this way. For every hour, she catches up. So in one hour, she catches up 10 miles to him. Two hours, she catches up 20 miles to him. We know that she's 40 miles behind. So how long would it, will it take her to catch up to him? Well, if she's gaining 10 miles an hour, that means, and now we can kind of use our distance rate formula here. She's 40 miles away. And she's catching up at a rate of 10 miles an hour. We can just say, oh, okay. Therefore, t is equal to four hours. That's the total total number of time it'll take her to catch up. So we can still use distance and rate, but we have to think of it differently in terms of subtracting. We're subtracting, not adding together, which is the tricky part. But there is our answer, and there you have three different setups where we have distance, rate, and time, and we need to find an answer relying on our nifty little formula. So there we are. You don't have to be scared anymore of these question types because you've got the distance rate formula in your back pocket. If you like this video, then click on the link in the description below. That will take you to sat.magoosh.com where you can join thousands of other students who are prepping for the SAT. If you want more helpful tips and strategies, then check out the videos on the left, and I will see you next time.